Escherichia coli, or E. coli, is a large and diverse group of bacteria. It is a common and ordinarily harmless bacteria in the feces of humans and livestock. While most strains of E. coli are harmless, others can make you sick. Some kinds of E. coli cause disease by making a toxin called Shiga toxin. The bacteria that make these toxins are called Shiga toxin producing E. coli, or STEC for short. You might also hear them called VTEC or EHEC. These all refer generally to the same group of bacteria. STEC lives in the guts of ruminant animals, including cattle, goats, sheep, deer, and elk. The major source for human illnesses is cattle. STEC that cause human illness generally do not make animals sick. Other kinds of animals, including pigs and birds, sometimes pick up stack from the environment and may spread it. Infections start when you swallow stack. In other words, when you get tiny, usually invisible amounts of human or animal feces in your mouth. Unfortunately, this happens more often than we would like to think about. Exposures that result in illness include the consumption of contaminated food, consumption of unpasteurized milk, consumption of water that has not been disinfected, contact with cattle, or contact with the feces of infected people. Most of what we know about STEC comes from outbreak investigations and studies of E. coli 0157 infection, which was first identified as a pathogen in 1982. E. coli 0157H7, often shortened to E. coli 0157 or even just 0157, is the most commonly identified STEC in North America. When you hear news reports about outbreaks of E. coli infections, they are usually talking about E. coli 0157. Some foods are considered to carry such a high risk of infection with E. coli that health officials recommend that people avoid them completely. These foods include unpasteurized milk, unpasteurized apple cider, and soft cheeses made from unpasteurized milk. People have also gotten infected with E. coli by swallowing lake water while swimming, touching the environment in petting zoos and other animal exhibits, and by eating food prepared by people who did not wash their hands well after using the toilet. According to the CDC, the dangerous E. coli strain 0157 infects about 73,000 Americans a year and kills 61. In addition to E. coli 0157, many other kinds of STEC cause disease. These other kinds are sometimes called non-0157 STEC. As a whole, the non-0157 serogroup is less likely to cause severe illness than 0157. The non-0157 STEC are not nearly as well understood, partly because outbreaks due to them are rarely identified. However, some non-0157 STEC serogroups can cause the most severe manifestations of STEC illness. Because there are so many possible sources, most public health professionals can only guess where an E. coli infection came from. If your infection happens to be one of the 20% or so of cases that are part of a recognized outbreak, the health department might identify the source. Although E. coli bacteria can be passed from person to person through a variety of methods, most E. coli outbreaks are generally associated with undercooked meat. On September 29, 2006, Health officials in several states who were investigating reports of stack illnesses found that many ill persons had consumed the same brand of frozen ground beef patties. The USDA issued a recall of 21.7 million pounds of frozen ground beef patties. The stack bacteria can also be found on sprouts or leafy vegetables such as spinach. In 2006, Three people died and more than 200 fell ill from an outbreak that was traced back to packaged spinach grown in California. People of any age can become infected with STEC. Very young children and the elderly are more likely than others to develop severe illness and husks, but even healthy older children and young adults can become seriously ill. The time between ingesting the STEC bacteria and feeling sick is called the incubation period. This period is usually three to four days after the exposure, but may be as short as one day or as long as 10 days. The symptoms of STEC infections vary for each person, but often include severe stomach cramps, diarrhea, often bloody, and vomiting. 
If there is fever, it is usually not very high, less than 101 degrees Fahrenheit. Most people will get better within five to seven days. While some infections are very mild, others are severe or even life-threatening. Around five to 10% of those who are diagnosed with STEC infection develop a potentially life-threatening complication known as hemolytic uremic syndrome, also known as HUS. Clues that a person is developing HUS include decreased frequency of urination, feeling very tired, and losing the pink color in the cheeks and lower eyelids. Persons with HUS should be hospitalized because their kidneys may stop working and they may develop other serious problems. Most persons with HUS recover within a few weeks, but some suffer permanent damage or die. HUS, if it occurs, develops an average of seven days after the first symptoms. Steck typically disappear from the feces by the time the illness is resolved, but may be shed for several weeks, even after symptoms go away. Young children tend to carry Steck longer than adults. A few people keep shedding these bacteria for several months. Good hand washing is always a smart idea to protect you, your family, and other persons. The best treatment for Steck infection is nonspecific supportive therapy, including hydration. Antibiotics should not be used to treat this infection, and taking antibiotics may actually increase the risk of HUS. Antidiarrheal agents like Imodium may also increase that risk. School and work exclusion policies differ by jurisdiction. Check with your local or state health department to learn more about the laws where you live. Steck infections can be prevented by doing the following. Wash your hands thoroughly after using the bathroom or changing diapers and before preparing or eating food. Wash your hands after contact with animals or their environments, at farms, petting zoos, fairs, even your own backyard. Cook meats thoroughly. Ground beef and meat that has been needle tenderized should be cooked to a temperature of at least 160 degrees Fahrenheit. It's best to use a thermometer as color is not a very reliable indicator of doneness. Avoid unpasteurized milk, dairy products, and juices, like fresh apple cider. Avoid swallowing water when swimming or playing in lakes, ponds, streams, swimming pools, and backyard kiddie pools. Prevent cross-contamination in food preparation areas by thoroughly washing hands, counters, cutting boards, and utensils after they touch raw meat. Following these simple steps will help to ensure that you your family, and your community remain safe and healthy.